Hi, Bill from CJ Pony Parts. It's nothing worse than getting stuck in the rain in your Mustang convertible and your power top simply won't go up. Something that recently happened to us with our 71 here. The power top system is actually a very simple hydraulic system, but there's several areas where it can fail causing that exact problem. Today we're going to take a closer look at the hydraulic system and we're going to troubleshoot the issues with our 71. The power top system is going to consist of the switch, the motor, the lines, and the convertible top cylinders. When the switch is in the up position, it's going to turn the motor in one direction, which will send fluid to the cylinders, and it's going to lift them upward. When you flip the switch down, it sends power to the other side of the motor, and it will spin in the opposite direction, pull the fluid out of the cylinders, and bring your top down. When replacing any part of the power top's hydraulic system, you want to make sure you fill it using this hole here, and use only automatic transmission fluid for the system. When troubleshooting the system, there's several areas you're going to want to look at to try to determine where your problem is. If you hit the switch and absolutely nothing happens, you want to check the switch to make sure it's getting power, and then check your motor to see if power is getting in the motor. Many times, that's actually going to be a switch failure, but it could be the motor as well. In the case of our 71, the motor makes noise when we hit the switch, which means our motor is okay. Our problem lies in either our lines or our cylinders. Since our top won't go up at all, we can actually hear fluid behind the seats. We're going to pull out the cylinders, take a look, and see what we have to repair. For this installation, you'll need a Phillips head screwdriver, 3 8 ratchet, 7 16 socket, half inch socket, short extension, quarter inch ratchet, quarter inch socket, half inch wrench, 7 16th wrench, plastic syringe or turkey baster, a pry bar, thread sealant, and one quart of type F automatic transmission fluid. The power top motor is mounted in the very front of the trunk floor right behind the back seat. Here you can see the hydraulic lines going out to the cylinders as well as the wiring going off to the switch. The convertible top cylinders are located below the front of the top frame behind these quarter trim panels. Since we think our problem lies there, we're going to remove the back seat and remove these panels so we can access them. We're going to start by removing the lower seat cushion. Simply pull up and pull it outward. Now we'll pull out and slide up our rear seat cushion. Now the back seat's out, you can see the front of the motor as well as the rest of the hydraulic lines. First step in removing the quarter trim panels is to remove our window cranks. Now we're going to remove the rest of the mounting screws to hold the quarter trim panel to the body. Put the last screw on the outside here. And remove our quarter trim panel. We see a lot of fluid on the floor on the driver's side, which is where we thought the problem was. We're going to hit the switch, see if we can locate where it's leaking. Yeah, and there we can see it's leaking from our upper fitting. We also noticed the driver's side clevis pin was missing from our convertible top. The pin is what actually connects the cylinder to the top itself, allowing it to push the top upward. In our case, it was just pushing against the top and not pushing it up, which probably also led to its failure. Now we're going to start removing the bolt that holds the cylinder into place. We get a pry bar in there, we're going to gently pry it away from the bracket. Now we're going to disconnect the hydraulic lines from the hydraulic cylinder. If you still have fluid in the system, you'll want to use a drain pan. In our case, it's already all over the floor, we're just going to take our fittings off. We're going to replace one line at a time. We're going to start with the one on the front here and disconnect it from the motor. Now to remove the line, we're going to loosen up these two brackets. Now 
Now we're gonna install our first new line. The lines are actually different lengths. You wanna grab the longer one since this one goes to the bottom of the cylinders. We're gonna put a little bit of thread sealing on before we attach it to our motor. We're gonna fish the line over, put it back underneath the bracket. Same opening as before. Now we're gonna change out the other hydraulic line. There's a couple ways to get to it. You can actually get a wrench through here. You can come through the trunk. I found the easiest way. Just remove these two nuts that hold the motor in so you can get to the motor easier. At this point, if you were changing out your motor, you would simply disconnect the harness and the ground wire, and you could swap it out. We'll disconnect our line. and remove it. Just like before, little thread sealant. Put our motor back into place. Once the line's run, we can tighten this back down. We're now ready to install the cylinder to our lines. Just like before, we want to put a little thread sealant onto the fittings. The longer hose and we go into the bottom. You want to get it as tight as you can get it by hand. Then another quarter to half turn with a wrench, that's as tight as you want to make it. Now we're ready to fill and bleed the system. Normally you would want to take the cylinders and put them back in their brackets to do this. We're going to leave them out so you can actually see the process you do put them back in the brackets, do not connect them to the convertible top yet. You're only replacing a single cylinder, make sure you disconnect the clevis pin on the other side. You want the rams and the cylinders to be able to move freely, which makes the system much easier to bleed. The system gets filled by removing this rubber plug here, and then filling with automatic transmission fluid right up to the edge till it starts to drain over. You want to put a towel or rag of some sort underneath this when you're filling it. We're going to use this large plastic syringe to fill it. If you don't have something like this, a turkey baser will work just as well. Once it stops dripping over the edge, then you want to stop. Now we're going to start filling the cylinders from the reservoir by running the convertible top motor in the up position. You want to do this between 10 and 20 seconds. I just want to give it a second for the fluid to move through, then we'll check the reservoir and we'll run it again. Now that we have fluid in the lines and the cylinders, we want to top off the reservoir and our motor. Cool. I'll put the cap back in, we'll run the system multiple times, make sure everything's good. Now 
Now we're gonna lower the cylinders all the way down, which would be the top in the down position, and then we're gonna check our fluid level. Start stripping out again. We can put our cap back in. Once the system is filled and bled, you'll want to check all the fittings on both the motor and the cylinders. Make sure they're all dry. Now we're going to bolt the motor back down and install the cylinders. The cylinder is going to mount to this stud here. And this outer stud here. Bolt removed earlier allows us to pivot just enough to get it in there. It can be a little work sometimes to get it lined up, but it's a lot easier than taking the whole assembly off. repeat the process on the other side. Since it's very hard to see on the car, we're gonna use this old top frame, this old cylinder, to show you how the ram from the cylinder connects to the clevis pin itself. The ram is gonna go through this opening in the top frame. The pin will then slide through, but the retainer on the other side. Here's a comparison of the clevis pins of the different years. This is the 65 through eight clevis pin, which is available new. The second one here is 6970, much longer and is not available new. Same thing goes for this one here, which is our 71 to 73 version. What we do is pick up a universal clevis pin at a local hardware store and then cut it to length. Even though we have the cylinders closed and the top is all the way down, the clevis pin's not gonna line up properly between the ram and our top frame. What you'll wanna do is actually lift the top up manually to get them lined up. It's a good idea to have someone help you while you do the pins, they can lift up the roof. A little bit. There we go. Get that through. There we go. Now that we have the clevis pins installed, we're ready to test our top. There we go, everything looks good. We'll double check everything for leaks and then put our back seat back together. We're gonna start with the interior quarter trim panels. Reinstall our window crank. Put our seat back in place. And finally, our seat bottom. Better insulation is finished. That's much better. 71 convertible wasn't much use to us without a working top. Now, we're ready to take it for a cruise. Installation should take you no more than two to three hours. You'll be back on the road in no time.